Hi, my name is Ed Levi. I'm doing a video today to show you how to put together a beehive. It's sort of the first thing that beekeepers need to understand in order to become a beekeeper. But before I start, I want to explain a few things about honeybees. A family of honeybees is called a colony. Honeybees get their resources mainly from flowers. They get nectar from the flowers and they get pollen from the flowers. Nectar is the carbohydrates and pollen is the protein that they need for raising babies. Their shelters are called hives. People often get confused in between hives, swarms, and colonies. Any type of shelter that the bees are living in is considered a hive. Humans have learned that taking care of bees benefits the bees and also benefits people and nature in, in general. A teacher and part-time beekeeper in Philadelphia named Lorenzo Langstroth designed hives that allowed bees to live like they would in a tree, but also allowed the beekeeper to work with them and harvest their honey without destroying their homes. There's a lot of different styles of hives, but the most common one used in North America is the Langstroth hive named after that teacher. The main thing about a Langstroth hive is that they all have to be the same exact same dimensions. Another important thing about these hives is that they have frames and the bee beekeeper can take them out and see how the queen's doing, see how the colony's doing, and also take out frames of honey and extract it and return the, the frame to the hive. So this is a, an old but pre-assembled hive and inside of it there are frames. But if we were gonna leave this frame for the bees, they would use this for their brood chamber. In other words, it would become the area where they raise their young. There are shorter frames and shorter boxes. This is a super frame. Supers are shallower boxes. They sit on top of the brood chamber and they take the shorter frames. The reason it's called super is because it's superimposed or it becomes a super structure. The frames hang in the boxes of the hives and the distance between the frames is also important. If you notice on here, they have little shoulders on the sides. Those shoulders help space the frame so that they're exactly the right distance apart. When they build their comb in there, the space between this frame and the next frame needs to be exactly right. Now on this box, you'll see that there are no finger joints. This is just a rabbited box. They're not as strong as the box that we're going to make today with finger joints. And it will look like this. So you have interlocking pieces. Now you can buy lumber and cut and build your hives yourself. But with lumber prices today, it might be just as cheap to buy pre-cut boxes, or you can even buy boxes that are already pre-assembled. If you're buying a kit, it should be standard size. If you're building your own, make sure that you have the dimensions exactly right. Making frames is more complicated than making hive bodies and supers, and I would suggest those be bought. A frame broken down, not put together, costs about a dollar from supply stores. And we're just gonna put some together today. We're gonna use glue, nails, and a few screws. I'm gonna put down some cardboard in order to not get glue on my bench. So these are the tools that I use for putting together a hive and I'm not selling tight ball. So this is, this is the end piece of a hive. The long, the long pieces are the sides. You notice on the end pieces, there's a rabbit across the top or a dado cat that is made for hanging the frames. These are made so they fit together pretty tightly. But before you put them together, you want to put a little bit of glue on each dado or each rabbit. That's why I put the cardboard down. Doesn't take very much. And if you just do it on the upper side of each one, you'll get it on both sides. Just slowly try to force those together. And I got way too much glue. You wanna use a square to make sure that the corner is square when you're done. And before the glue sets and before you put the nails in. The kits usually have pre-drilled holes. I use a seven penny nail. Seven penny nails are hard to find and you can use eight penny, but make sure they're box nails. They take quite a few nails because you're gonna put them in in both directions. I'm gonna leave the top one and the bottom one for later. We go ahead and do the, the next side. You wanna make sure that the rabbits are always up and that the handles are always on the outside. The bees don't need handles, the beekeeper does. Again, I'm just putting it on the top pieces of both pieces because that will get it on the bottom piece of the other one. Okay. 
this particular box that we're putting together now is going to be inside the library to be an educational tool. There'll be frames in it that have educational posters in the frames. Almost perfect. I often say that bees sleep just as well in a Motel 6 as they do in a Hilton. For the library, we're building Hiltons. And by the way, bees don't actually sleep. Okay, now we can go back and get the ones that we didn't do yet. Okay, that's all the nails that we need in that. And I'm using finishing screws. They have a very small head on them for uh, the corners. All right, that's a finished hive body. Next, we have to put together some frames. If we were gonna put together supers, we would do exactly the same thing. We also have to make a bottom board and a top board. This particular kit that we have had a bottom board that came with it already assembled. This is called a solid bottom board. I don't like solid bottom boards. So I take bottom boards that are solid and I cut out the center of it and I put it in a screen. This way the bees have more air. They don't get too cold in the winter because bees don't heat the space, they heat their cluster and the trash falls through. This kit also had an assembled lid. This is called a telescoping lid because it goes down on all four sides of the box. Normally when you have telescoping lids, you need to use an inner cover. Otherwise the bees will glue the lid on. You won't be able to get it off. But with the inner cover, you can get your hive tool in between the inner cover and the box. And the lid just goes on it like that. This would be the setup with a bottom board under it, the setup of a single hive body, which is what we're gonna start with at the library. Before we start the frames, I wanna show you one other type of a box. This is a, called a nuke box. It comes from the word uh, nucleus. Nucleus just means it's the nucleus or the heart of a colony. And the nuke would have a young queen and a few thousand bees and some food. And with some work with the beekeepers and the bees having good resources, they'll build it into a full colony pretty rapidly. And that's what the library is going to be starting with. We're getting a couple nukes and then we'll probably catch a swarm for the third one. So basically it's, it's exactly the same. These frames would be interchangeable in between the big boxes and the little boxes. So once we got that swarm home or if we bought a nuke, we can take these frames out of this box and put it into a full box and then encourage the bees to use 10 frames instead of the five frames that are in our nuke. And now we're gonna talk about putting together some frames. If you're just doing a few frames, you can do them by hand. Again, it's best to use glue. It's just two sides, they're called end bars, and a top bar and a bottom bar. The bottom bar has a slit in it for putting the foundation in. The foundation is a guide for the bees so that they build their comb straight instead of uh, curvy or cross combed it's called. There's different styles of top bar. This has got a wedge uh, board with it that comes right out and you can put the foundation in easily and then nail that in place. So for a beekeeper that's just putting together one or uh, just a few hives, you can just nail these. Usually one decent nail in the center this way and then one good nail this way making sure that it goes into the, the wood there. That way it won't come apart. And then smaller nails at the bottom. If you're putting together more than just a few hives, it's good to have a jig, which I'll show you, and it's good to have a nail gun or a staple gun. So I've got a special jig that I use for putting together frames. With a jig, it holds the, the side bars in the right position it makes everything automatically square and then you can nail them really easily. This will be 10, which will be just enough for the box that we just built. So what, what this does, this box comes apart so you can, you can put the whole frame together and then take it apart and they come out because it's got a spring on this side that holds the frames, the side pieces fairly tight. But you get the side pieces pretty much straight up and down, and then you can put the top bars on. It's best to use glue because, especially the frames, they get a lot of uh, stress from the beekeeper because beekeepers are pulling them out of the hive all the time, and so you want them to hold together. 
A standard hive holds 10 frames. A hive that is a box that's full of honey, a super will hold about 35 pounds of honey, plus the wood, plus the propolis and stuff. It end up weighing almost 50 pounds. So there's a saying that beekeepers either have a bad back or will have a bad back. If you're using a staple gun, the important thing is to make sure that you're straight because it's gonna put the staple wherever you're aiming it. And if you miss and don't go straight, it's gonna be sticking out someplace. But you can see this is a lot easier than putting in nails everywhere. So those top boards are attached but we're gonna attach them sideways too to make sure that they don't pull out. And I think we can just use brads for that. Then I'm gonna expose the bottom so I can put the bottom boards in with the groove up, which would be down because it's upside down. You can see that the jig makes it a lot easier and it assures that everything's straight. When the frames are all stapled and put together, you can take this box and undo the, the spring and the frames can just slide out and then they can go directly into the hive. So you'll end up having 10 frames in there. That little shoulder that I talked about will keep the distance just right. Inside of those frames, we're gonna put foundation. There's different types of foundation. This is a plastic foundation. We used to just use wax foundation, beeswax. The problem with beeswax foundation now is that a lot of beekeepers are in places where there's a lot of agrochemicals and the bees are picking up some of those chemicals and all waxes are lipids, which means they're fatty tissue, which means they absorb things. And so it's hard to find wax anymore that's organic, that's not laced with chemicals. This particular plastic is a food grade plastic. What I do is I coat mine with my own wax that I get from the cappings when I'm extracting. I melt the wax in a double boiler turkey baster. I just take a paintbrush and I brush. The hive needs to be painted. Painting the hive is important to protect it from the elements, but it's also important because it also protects the bees. I like to use a latex paint because that can breathe. The bees will create moisture inside, but with a latex paint, that moisture can get out, but it will still be waterproof enough that moisture doesn't get in from rain and stuff. This hive is gonna be painted for inside the library for educational purposes, and the other hives like this one. This one was actually shellac and I, I sanded the shellac off of it so that it could be painted white and then it can be painted again by some of the youths at the library to make it interesting and pretty. Like I said, the hive is probably the most important tool a beekeeper can have because it's helping the bees have a nice shelter. As these get stacked up, it becomes more and more like a hollow tree. And uh, it's the way bees like to be, but it's also the way beekeepers can take out the frames, see what's happening in there, see that the queen's doing her job and that the bees are all doing their job. So that's all I have for you today. There's going to be more possibly videos, but there's also going to be classes at the library that I'll be teaching people that want to just learn about bees and also people that want to learn about beekeeping. So thank you very much.